Yeah, no, that I was 100% just trying to murder him with that ball. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna be shy about it. Either you are or you aren't. If you're not a fan of it, don't start it. I definitely sent one at him after he went at Eric for what I felt like was like the fifth time. Mm -hmm. I sent one that hit the net and went like 30 feet out. Like it was just, it was a brush back. It was like a, you go after my guy, I'm gonna go after after yours. Okay, we're giving away 10 Franklin paddles. Uh, so you can go to giveaway.thedinkpickleball.com slash Franklin, or go to our Instagram um, and you can go to the link in the bio, or you can uh, go in the show notes uh, in the description on, on YouTube. Um, but first place winner will receive the FS Tour limited edition bundle. So you can do a Franklin Dynasty or Tempo 16 or 14 millimeter, your, millimeter, your choice. Also includes a Magic Carbon eraser uh, and a really cool paddle cover. And then nine winners, so the nine runner-ups, will get uh, FS Tour paddles. And you can choose from either a Dynasty or a Tempo, again, 14 or 16, in either blue, gray, or pink. So that's a big giveaway with 10 winners. Uh, you can go to giveaway.thedinkpickleball.com slash Franklin. Or again, just check the uh, description of this YouTube video, or you can just go to our Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and go to the link in the bio, and you'll see it there. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, Tyler has gonna Wait, hold on. That's recording. What's up, Del Deckel? I'm good. That's a, quite an official recording uh, thing you got there. Yeah, no, this is a this is a legit studio. Pouch six over here in Austin. I'm surprised. It's a cool spot. I know, it's a hop, skip, and jump from my house. You can throw a stone over there. It's great. Walk past a bunch of homeless people on the way over here. It's <laughs> always a little sketchy, but uh, we made it. You made it. I made it. Thomas made it. Professional podcasters. I've got the uh, silver medalist and the bronze medalist, men's doubles, sitting next to me. Let's go. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. How's and it? we have beef, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have yeah. major beef. Huge beef. Yeah. Yeah. Big beef. Well, one of you had to take out the other on the way there. Did you see my tweet? That was after game one, which you guys won 11-3. Nobody sees your tweets, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> four people saw it. it four impressions. And I was like, I hate that Zane has to take out Deckel right now. Uh, but it has to be done. What? <laughs> and, then you, on. and then you guys won that next game. And I was like, yeah. this is going to work. And then you guys just uh, we should have We should have pickled them uh, in, the, in the third. If only I can get out of the way from one ball, <laughs> yeah. but no. That was insane. I mean, there were more body bags in that match than I think I've ever seen in a single match. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Eric hits a hits a hard ball. I'm a big target. Uh, I, I think Zane is the only one who didn't get hit. I think you got, you. no, I didn't get hit. You earned and I like got a paddle oh, on okay. it that would have hit me, but it didn't actually hit me. It kind of hit my the handle of my paddle. So I don't think I got, I don't think I got bagged in that one. Ah, that's a shame. But uh, I know, I know Tommy has some some clips for us on that. Yeah, oh, we're gonna way. we're gonna walk through those. Wait, question on, <laughs> question on Eric Lang, he's hitting the ball harder, right, than he ever has. I mean, I don't remember ever him ever having a big drive, but it he, seemed like it was pretty effective in your match. Yeah, I mean, he definitely always hit the ball hard, but I mean, he's playing with a new Yola paddle, who's which is you know definitely poppy. Uh, so I think that's helped him a lot too. Um, yeah, the, he's he's a big guy. He's got a lot of power. Uh, yeah, that little the thunder punch yeah. always uh, always hit pretty hard. Now it's pretty next level. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, he's always had the big one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, you know, back end punch in the game. Mm -hmm. How many body bag attempts do you guys think there were in that match? Just guess. I'm gonna guess. I don't know if Eric, he maybe missed one or two on you, so he yeah. he would have had six. <laughs> I had one very notable. Um, yeah, that was a big one. You gave you gave I two gave, or three. Yeah. You got you got him once. Yeah, and I missed once maybe. I don't remember. And then Tyson shot a bunch of them at at Eric too. So fifteen. I don't know. Yeah, fifteen, twenty, something like that. Sixteen. Oh. Okay. Not bad. How many successful do you think there were? <laughs> Zero on your boy. <laughs> so I got, how many did I get? Four or five on me? And then Tyson got one or two. Eric got two. Then got zero. So what is that? Seven successful total. Okay. Eric had five successful body bags. <laughs> did he get Tyson once? Or did he get. Um, let's see. I think they were all on me, probably. 
I think one of them was like a like a hands battle that got you in the leg or something. Oh. As everybody knows, I'm just gonna say, leg bag, it has to be above the waistline for it to be a bag. Like, how, about, how about the net bags? You always say though those don't I count. agree with Net that. bags don't count. But those are fun. They are, yeah, they're definitely <laughs> fun. They're definitely way more humiliating for yeah. sure. But it's not the same, it's not the same effect. Like, you just need True. solid no. contact to the yeah. upper torso for it to be a bag in my, in my uh, uh, summation. Okay. Are you gonna put that in the bag rule? Bag rule book? Is that a thing? Are you going to make one? I think that the bag rules are more of a gentleman's code than anything. <laughs> yeah. um, it'd, be, it'd lose some of its effect if it was truly written down and codified. <laughs> but it, it's like, you know, all right, this is going to get weird, but I'm pretty sure there was a like a Supreme Court case where there was like, uh, they were debating whether or not something was legal uh, about, about pornography. <laughs> And the Supreme Court justice said, like, I don't, we can't really define it, but you know it when you see it. And so, there we go. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the connection there. That's like bags and pickleball. And yeah. we, we can totally cut that if we need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I learned nothing there. Um, I'm dumber for having listened to it. I award you no point. And may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> Eric, Five points from Gryffindor. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Eric Lang targeted you nine times. Body bags. By the way, these right. stats are from uh, Real Clear Stats, so thanks to Ben. Right. Um, but he basically drew up uh, a whole body bag breakdown because um, I think it was necessary after watching that match. But throughout all that, you guys were, for the most part, like smiling, kind of like having a good time. It didn't seem, except maybe Tyson was uh, <laughs> getting a little, um, a little more contentious. But uh, like in those moments in a match like that, is that just, are you guys just like having fun out there? It's not, not a lot of animosity. I mean, you would think if you just look at the stats from this game, you'd be like, oh, that must have been a heated match. But based on your expressions out there, it seemed like you guys were just like enjoying it and having fun. Yeah, I think it, it depends depends on the situation. And, uh, you know, we're all friends there. Um, so just took it lighthearted and it's just, you know, it was a good tactic. It was clearly working. The stats yeah. show it. So... It's hard to, you know, hard to go against it, but, you know, sometimes it can be too much if it's like, you know, you're targeting, you know, the head or something that is a bit, a bit too much. Uh, but if, you know, if you're going for chest and going, you know, it's, it's reasonable, then I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. You gave a funny look when I asked that question. Why? Well, I, uh, it felt weird. I, I'm not going to lie. It did feel weird. Like I <laughs> felt, I felt you and I tag each other in practice all the time, yeah. right? Like we know each other. Like if we were, if, if it was me and Deckel going back and forth on that, like it wouldn't feel. I I don't think it would have felt weird, but for me that did feel a little weird. Like it felt, um, you know, I don't know if Eric and Deckel know each other like that. Like me and Tyson don't know each other like that. Like it's a strategy, fine, but like, yeah, it felt it felt weird. I I felt weird. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It just it just felt like contentious, like it was just, or, or what do you mean it felt weird? Slightly, I would say so. Like it was, I I f thought it was a little uncomfortable. Yeah, like for sure. And you know, you you and Eric, you and Eric were like seemed pretty fine about it. Like I could tell nobody likes getting hit that many times, and I could tell like it were a bit frustrating. Yes. Yeah, yes. it's a bit frustrating. It was weird with the. Especially with the comments from from Tyson afterwards about it, like made it seem a little uh, strange. Okay, so I went back to watch the post match interview specifically. The PPA cut out part of Tyson's response, so his full post match interview isn't there. Like it skips. You can tell the PPA decided to cut something out. Is that what you're referencing? Were there some comments? Uh, well, no. I mean, I mean, his comments were just something along the lines of like it was maybe getting a little bit, a little bit out of control. He doesn't really like that sort of uh, sort of play. Like I don't know, Deckel would know best. He was he was there. I saw the thing on YouTube. Is that a fair summary of of what he what he said? Yeah, I mean, I think it. I mean, look, it definitely was a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Weird match for sure. I do think it's a it's a fine tactic as long as it's you know within reason. Uh, I think maybe there was a ball or two there that weren't maybe within reason. That maybe that's what Tyson was talking about. But the general, in general, I think it's fine. 
Yeah, I'm sure the one that he was, if there was one in particular, like, it was the one that I smacked at him. So, like, my thought process was, I was under the impression that Tyson, against Eric, right, a pretty well-known strategy is you go at him and you go at him hard because he doesn't let the ball go. He's so right. on those backhands. And so, early out, early on in that match, like, Tyson had a few balls that he was rocketing at Eric that would have gone as out as any of Eric's shots, but Eric hit them. Right. So like to me, it felt like Tyson was the one who initiated this. Right. And so in the in the after the after match thing where he's saying that he's not a huge fan of it, like either you are or you aren't. If you're not a fan of it, don't start it. Yeah. W was he like acting like he's above it? That's that's how it seemed to to me. And I, he did mention that, like, it's a it's a legit tactic, but he doesn't like it. Yeah. So. I definitely sent one at him after he went at Eric for what I felt like was like the fifth time. Mm -hmm. I sent one that hit the net and went like 30 feet out. Like it was <laughs> just, it was a brush back. It was like a, you go after my guy, I'm going to go after, after yours. Yeah. And I think that one was didn't... the one uh, that caused the issues. Was <laughs> yeah, that and that's... the one that went off the tape and hit him? No, it didn't hit him. It went off the tape and went like a hundred feet out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that I was 100% just trying to murder him with that ball. Like, I'm not going to be shy about it. But that's also the Wait, so let's that was the that only one. shot that I went for that was completely intended to be just hit him the entire match. So we'll so let's watch a few of these clips. Let's see if um, we can watch this one that you're talking about. This is the one that goes off the tape. Change the momentum. Wow, everyone is firing away at each other. This is nuts, Adam. Yeah, this I uh, I'm wondering. There was that. There was there was extra on Two that on swing of the paddle right there, and I know Tyson didn't like it. So that's he's like, there was extra. <laughs> so that's probably the one where he was like, "All right, uh, this is this is like bush league," and like that probably raised the tensions quite a bit. Sure, rewind that video 30 seconds and watch the point before. Actually? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I couldn't go back. Shut up, Siri. <laughs> Let's see. We were going for the second tattoo right there. That thing was hammered. Dave, I don't think he was trying to keep that in. I don't think so either. <laughs> right, which was like a clear cross court gunning for for Eric there. That's that's how I felt. <laughs> right. So I'll say, I shot one ball as hard as I could at Tyson. That was the only bag attempt I was going for. And like, it's like baseball. You throw at my guy, I'm gonna throw at your guy. And Tyson, after that, he didn't send another one at Eric. There's not a there's not a single one afterwards. He slowed it down after that. Uh, you guys did your thing afterwards, but well, I think it was Eric. mostly Eric. Eric. I think I I went at him once early in the third game. Maybe I got him, or I think you got think, you got him at one point. I think yeah. that that was it. You know, maybe I went him one more time. Uh, Eric definitely won that fight. Uh, <laughs> but hey, uh, Eric, next time. We're, we're continuing the count. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, okay. The only issue I have is, you know, maybe maybe Tyson has a chance to to clear this up. Like, I I don't have a problem with with the with the strategy. Like, I'm curious what your thought is. Like, is our body bags like legit strategy, or should they be like sort of frowned upon yeah and can you translate this to the rec game a little bit too and like how that differs from pro to if you're just playing pickup or in an amateur tournament yeah i think first of all in the pros uh i do think it's a it's a good strategy um and it's legit but you know again there's there's some kind of line that you don't want to cross you don't want to go up at somebody's neck or face or you know you don't want to you don't want it to be extra or, you know, sometimes it's it's hard to really explain, but sometimes when you see it or you feel it, that it's just that one was a little bit too much, you know. So I don't think any of the ones that Eric did to me, for example, were, were, were too much. They're all They all seemed fair game, uh, you know, they, they were annoying, Eric, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm not upset about him or anything. Um, 
So, and and so that's for the, for the pros, I would say. Uh, for rec, it's a little bit fr frowned upon, but uh, <laughs> it, it again, it depends. Like I I, I practice with Zane, we you know, I probably go in more bags than than you know, and in, in a tournament ever, just because it's fun. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have this this thing, and we're, we're fine with it, both of us, I think, right? Yeah, I have no problem with it. I, <laughs> I, I yeah. If there's one thing I'm pretty good at, it's got to be getting out of the way of the ball. Like, yeah, yeah, you are. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we have we have no problem. I think to elaborate on your point, like I think the problem is really if it just starts getting up above like shoulder height, yeah, like yeah. at the head, I think is pretty much unanimously like we're not doing that, yeah, right? For and sure. not, there was none of that in in this match. Um, so yeah, generally yeah. it's a low percentage shot, right? But if you can pull Head it shots. off, it's uh, 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 body bags in general. Um, it depends on the target. Zane's a small target, so with Zane, it's a you know lower percentage shot. With me and Eric, it's a higher percentage shot. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it it depends. Uh, and I think, I think in general for like rec for you know recreational players, it's even more frowned upon. Uh, just. You know, as pros, we we practice also how we want to win, and and we you know it's our it's our profession, it's our it's how we make a living. So it's kind of you know you gotta practice the way the way you play too. So sometimes you do gotta practice it. Obviously, again within reason. Um, but when you you know you're playing recreationally with you know your your neighbor or your friend, it's uh, a bit. I think it's quite a bit more frowned upon. Unless you're like good buds yes yes so <laughs> yeah again depends on the situation <laughs> yeah okay all right let's watch a few more of these clips can we rate all do, we, these do we have to can we rate yeah. these different body bags on yeah. a scale of one to ten <laughs> i think that's what we need to do Goodness, that's as hard as somebody can get hit there. And this dude has some sort of dance routine going on at the kitchen. He's faking every time. Yeah, he, he has faked his opponents out. He's faked himself out. He is just hey, faking you... all the way on every single dink he hits. Wow. <laughs> you did almost. I, yeah, I saw almost like I saw it coming, and then I was like, well, it's just you know, it's so hard, and I, it's, it's hard for me to get out of the way of that one. I shouldn't even try to be honest. Like I don't, I don't normally try to get out the way. I normally just try to punch it back and sometimes hit the person back. Uh, and for some reason, that match, I thought I could get out the way, and I was very wrong. <laughs> do you think that has to do with like that it's cold and yes. specifically the yeah. fucking ball? A hundred, yeah, hundred percent. It was it was cold cold at that point. The ball played a lot faster. Uh, I think the Vulcan also plays even faster when it when it's cold, um, kind of springier, so it kind of springs off your off your paddle faster. Uh, and again, Eric, big guy, uh, powerful paddle. So all these, all of these things together. That is beautiful, and Ernie from Deckel Bar. Okay. Got him. <laughs> is that was that actually, was that a bag? I don't think it hit me. I think it hit my my paddle, didn't it? Dude, it's a bag. <laughs> Except right, a it. paddle bag. All right, we'll take yeah. it. The the Ernie bag. I mean, it's a decent play. It's not, you know, it's not like a, a hard, it's super hard shot that you know you kind of going for for broke that Ernie's probably going into, uh, just kind of to jam the person. On that one, you hit such a looping forehand. Do you here? I'll play it again. Which one? The the one we just watched. So watch how much your forehand like loops. <laughs> I've seen loopier <laughs> from yeah. Deckel in this match. There's going to be another one that we watch where it's even more insane. All yeah, right, so this one, nasty. this one is 9.55. That's pretty from Eric Lang. I mean, everybody's getting hit. I, I mean, mean, we, we <laughs> it's working, it's not working, but people are getting tattoos left and right. What an interesting Three, one, sequence two. of events from these four players. <laughs> that was a probably going in. Yeah, that was. That was a more. That was, that was a good spot. That wasn't really a, a bag attempt, it didn't look like to me. Just a good finish. Tried to get out of the way. 
Yeah, uh, I got I got jammed. I you know didn't didn't see it coming. I guess. I'd put that in a, like a different sort of category yeah. from the the off the bounce speed up bags. Right, right. If you're listening on Spotify or something else, you're yeah, come watch us on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube for this segment, or just fast forward through it. What an ATP from Deckel Bar on the full run. Tyson McGuffin wants the crowd to scream. And look at this great shot from the truck there right over the Eric Lang paddle. That's pretty. I like that one. Not a bag, but I love it. <laughs> okay, good ATP. We'll give that a 5 out of 10 ATP. What? Come on. It's at least a 7. Does Eric's footwork, his little dancing, all that body shifting, does that actually affect you guys? Is that messing with you at all? I mean, it's for sure a bit de uh, deceptive. Uh, I, I don't think it matters that much. But yeah, you kind of you feel like, oh, maybe he's going to do something. I do think it adds it adds something, yeah. Even watching this back, I can't tell what Eric's going to uh, do. Yeah, that's the, that's the last one. Title. Unbelievable Deckel Bar hits an unbelievable two-handed backhand ATP. And what does he have to show for it? His umpteenth tattoo. <laughs> he just came running in and got hit. I'm sorry. I'm one. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that one that one probably was the most frustrating like uh, you, you, i wanted yeah i wanted to end the match with like you know a good point a, a good atp and then i'm like oh he's got me gosh <laughs> damn it <laughs> uh yeah just, no way to get out of the way with that one that was a good one too because you were just, was, you could tell running. you were just getting out yeah, of the way yeah, and yeah, you yeah. still got tagged yeah like you knew it was coming i knew but i was like my, my momentum was already like forward and i couldn't like just couldn't change fast enough and one scorpion works and the second one had no sting that's just zane getting owned that scorp that was a clean <laughs> scorp clean scorp but deckel still came out on top that's tough fast hands dude anybody ever tell you that he's lucky uh once usually that's lucky yeah by the way the <laughs> fact that they are not like correct like the announcer on the you know intercom or whatever over while you guys are playing on championship court they don't know to like just wait between points to make those announcements it's like coming through on the on the stream yeah i don't know don't know but yeah, uh that's my complaint overall <laughs> good match fun fun but match different match very different match yes it was fun. Not Mo much, most of it. <laughs> yeah, not much like success dropping. Like it's it's a big change no, with yeah. this ball in particular. Yeah. Like now that yeah. we're playing a couple of tournaments, I think. I mean, what's going to be the meta? I'd have to imagine ninety percent third shot drives. Yeah, I don't know the percentage in in that match. Yes, uh, it was it was even colder and you know plays faster uh, and drives are working obviously. Um, but yeah, in general with this ball, I feel like it's, it's a bit harder to drop and, and easier to drive. So I think most matches we're seeing, we're seeing more, more drives. I think we were talking about it like before we started the first tournament, it's like, oh, it's like, we're having a lot, like a lot more drives here. For sure. Yeah. I think Eric and I probably drove 90% of our, our thirds mm -hmm. for the, for the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's a spinnier. It seems like it's much spinnier and the conditions seem to affect the, the speed of the ball pretty tremendously right um we're seeing a ton of bad bounces off of the the serves and so making the returns a little bit more difficult people are guiding the returns because they don't really know where the ball is going to right. to bounce and then that's just setting up a clobbering of a third right so yeah i played with the vulcan ball for the first time over the weekend and i agree especially on the serves like the ball could bounce anywhere it, when it's out around it's very unpredictable. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's making for less long points. We'll we'll put it that way. Maybe that's what we want. Maybe we want less long, long dinking exchanges. Get ready to meet your new favorite playing partner, Chuck. 
the Gamma Chuck Pickleball is a game changer. With 38 holes, unlike the usual 40, and a symmetrical pattern, Chuck ensures a true flight every time you play. It's designed to withstand extreme outdoor temperatures, guaranteeing durability without warping or cracking. A lot of issues with the warping and the balls going out around lately. This is a good solution. The Chuck will be available for purchase on February 9th. You can use the code DINK10, all caps DINK10, for 10% off your order. Play with Chuck. Visit Gammasports.com to learn more and grab your Chuck load. I like that Chuck load. G-A-M-M-A-S-P-O-R-T-S.com. DINK10 for 10% off. Yeah, I mean, that, does that bring us to, uh, to some, some serving stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll uh, get there. I know you're chomping at the bit over there. <laughs> Why don't you just calm down? No, but uh, we'll see if we have time for what, it. What What is the biggest complaint about uh, about pickleball? Like about you know rallies that it's not not entertaining enough, too long, like the dinking rallies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I guess it does it does make it faster. The ball going out around is that something that's like prevalent as you're playing the matches is that bugging you guys or is it like whatever i mean it seems to go out around and affect the play much more than the dura did and the dura was kind of known for that in my opinion take it away deckle uh yeah i think it does go out of round more um and yeah definitely out of round is not you know not good for 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 pro play or any play but um uh, it is good that they're changing changing balls every game uh, for us. I think it, it helps a lot. I think regardless of the ball, uh, which which ball we play with, I think it's something that that should happen um, for sure. So I'm I'm happy they you know they implemented that. Um, I think I mean they have it in tennis every seven and nine games I believe, uh, which is you know which is a lot a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of ball changes. It just makes it more for a more consistent game. You want you want to have the best product, right? Right. So you want to have a consistent ball that plays plays, you know, similar the whole time, not oh, we just you know, we just played with a ball for for 2 hours and it plays very different than than a fresh ball. Mm -hmm. So if we have the same, you know, consistent ball, we you know, we know what what to expect when we hit it. So it it just brings a better product. Yeah. For sure. It was always brutal like so I just remember some of those U.S. Opens where they would have, they would the ref would bring like two balls, and then there would be two balls that were sitting that had been used and sitting in the little basket on the court in ninety degrees in Florida, and then like you'd be warming up, you'd lose one, you would go from a brand new ball to a ball that is completely mush, and just there's no like uniformity. So I do think it's a really good step, regardless of what ball we use, to be getting a new one every game because. Yeah. Yeah, it it impacts the plate so unbelievably a lot, a lot. much. Yeah, right. Yeah, in the end, it's a plastic ball. Like the more you hit it, the the softer it gets, or the more out of round it gets. And you know, if if we have a the same you know fresh ball or you know close to fresh all the time, then just a just a better better product to watch. Yeah, I think I saw this kind of flying around. I don't I don't know if it was validated, but Matt Wright asking to change the ball eleven times in a single match. <laughs> I heard that. I did. Was that not in uh was that not in your match, your semi? No. No, I, I didn't see that happen. No. Or your We played them in quarters, but quarters, okay. We played some other weirdos in the in the semis. In the semis yeah. yeah. Um well Christian just put out a, a video I was sort of surprised about. He was trashing on it. <laughs> on the that, yeah. yeah. What do you say? Sucks. <laughs> 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 I mean, no. He just said like yeah, these balls go out around quickly, and we had balls that were brand new that were out of round. So, yeah, I'm sure they're gonna go back and and fix a lot of this. And as we know, over the years, like there's batches of all these balls that are different or a little different. And you know, I think it's what a three year deal or something like that. I'm not sure. So they've got some some time to uh, to fix it, um, which I'm sure they're working on. Yeah. Is it a three-year deal? I could be wrong. I, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was one year, but I, I, I'm not sure. Um, all right. Well, I know you want to talk about uh, the service stuff. Service stuff. You. Uh, so I think the PPA published your what you wrote about it. Um, Correct. Yeah. And uh, just to give a little bit of a backdrop, right? So the PPA implemented these provisional rules for the masters for the first time, right? Um, 
And basically it was, you know, we, we've talked about it enough on this pod, right? But there's no tossing the ball up on the serve. The ball must leave the hand in a downward motion. The ball must leave the hand at or below the top of the hip. Uh, they implemented it for the Masters. In the Masters, in the qualifying rounds alone, there were 72 faults recorded. <laughs> um, and there was a lot of confusion around it. I mean, there were clips of refs literally teaching pros how to hit the serve legally uh, before a match, right? Um, in Desert Ridge, they said, okay, each player will have one redo per match, right? So mm -hmm. it's not a vault, so they changed that a little bit. Um, but it seems like they're going to continue with these new rules. There's been different feedback, some people complaining a lot. I know you're not the biggest fan. Just taking one Neither quote from what just, you wrote. Just, just clarify. One line from what you had written was, making the serves less of a weapon and taking out the great variety of serves is certainly not the solution. But you take it away. What uh, generally, you know, how, how are you feeling about that? What's your, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, so in general, uh, I don't think we had an issue with like how, you know, the the power of the serve or like how aggressive the, the serving was or um, like you see and like I think also in the in I mean, in the article, there's also stats about it, how 97 point something percent of returns are made are, are in the court. Yeah. So, yeah. The, yeah. so the, the stat there is. In 2023, MLP premier level of the uh, 18,000 returns hit, 97.8% of returns were successful, which I believe 97.8, but I can't imagine there were 18,000 returns hit. That seems like that, that would seems be... seems like a lot. I was just looking at that number like that. It's got to be like 1,800 returns hit or something like that. Um, but either way, I'd, I'd imagine the, the, st the percentage is correct and just anecdotally watching like you you watch a match there are f at least 42 returns in a match and most matches you would go without seeing a single missed return right uh yeah and a lot of the missed returns are also just unforced errors with people trying to trying to get the return deeper uh of course there are some serves that are you know just uh, too good and and you and you miss the miss the return but 97.8 i mean i don't think we have i don't think the serve is too much of a weapon like at least not according to these stats um so changing the the rule to have the serve less of a weapon just doesn't make too much sense to me um and i understand that the rule it, it, like for me I, I do understand that it was the rule was a bit vague with where you can contact the ball which is you know uh, below your belly button so uh, which is, you know, hard to tell for the refs, so it caused caused a lot of issues for sure. Uh, but the rule change didn't make that better. It made now the contact point needs, or now the release point basically need of uh, of when you release the ball, needs to be below your hip bone, the top of your hip bone, which is again a place that you can't see. So it it didn't fix that at all. Like that's one thing. Plus it added another you know, tough thing for the refs, which is just to check if you're just releasing the ball or if you're tossing the ball a little bit. Uh, so it just added more confusion for the refs and the players to, you know, just to hit the serve and be able to uh, to enforce it. So instead of one thing, now you have two. Plus you, uh, you, lose, you lose a bit of athleticism when you force players to hit a certain way. Um, we're not, you know, we're kind of thinking about just releasing it, which is a bit, it's a bit unnatural for, for us. Because uh, you always, one, you need to remove your arm fast to, to hit the ball fast, so kind of your arm goes up. And two, just the motion of like a forehand, which is basically a serve, is your, your arm goes up. So it's just very hard to do naturally. So you kind of have to focus on it. And then, uh, again, it takes, it takes also a little bit of different styles away from the game, different serves people serving a bit more similar so again it's nice to see different styles and i think in any sport in anything um and yes also the serve is a bit less of a weapon uh because it's contact from from a different spot and kind of forcing us to to hit it a certain way mm -hmm. yeah you want to watch this clip of zane challenging your serve i sure. didn't actually get the chance to challenge his serve 
Yeah, yeah, right. It was, uh, yeah, it wasn't. I wasn't allowed. No, for real. I tried to. <laughs> but when are you gonna, you gotta get YouTube Premium? Are you kidding me? It's like eleven bucks a month, no ads, and you can listen to music through it. You can get rid of Spotify. All right, that sounded like a free ad, so Jamie <laughs> cut that out. Um, okay, so. See it was a free ad. YouTube should sponsor me. Zero remains. Seven zero one. What an ATP from Deckel Bar on the full run. Tyson McGuffin wants the crowd to scream and look at this great shot from the truck there right over the eric lang paddle that's pretty yeah not sure just a little conversation with the referee don stanley from eric lang not sure what about but yes the slice backhand atp of deckel bar well done everybody understand you can challenge the service release but it has to be done verbally before the third shot not after the third shot can't do it after that so so what Don means is after that. You, can you can hit a return action, or you can challenge a service release before the third shot. I'll, I'll happy to watch the ATP again. <laughs> <laughs> so the discrepancy was to, to me, my question was, it appeared that he he released the ball up. And I don't think you would argue the fact that you did release the ball up. Yeah. But and and you guys challenge tried to challenge right. Eric. Right. Eric for sure released the ball up. It, right. So I think, like I think most I don't know if most but a lot of players are releasing the ball up a little bit and also the refs are allowing that uh, from what I understood they're allowing like a little a natural release or something like that you know it's hard it's just very hard for the refs to judge uh, yeah, you would have I mean you'd literally have to keep your hand stationary or be moving it in a downward direction in order for the ball not to right have right some sort of and if and, and then you have to hit the ball so fast so your, your arm has to move fast if you want to hit a, a decent serve right. um so it just natural for your arm to go out slightly so they're kind of like it's a judgment call for them so it's it's just yeah. another judgment call which it adds I, a fourth yeah, judgment to, I, right. to an already arbitrary serve rule. Yeah, and I don't blame the refs for calling certain things and not calling th certain things. It's just so hard to know, and it's so hard. It's just such small, like, you know, margins are just so, it's just so hard. Yeah. Uh, which is why, I, and not one reason that I'm not a fan of this serve. And so you saw that you thought his release was in an upward motion, the ball, uh, during his serve, but at the end of the point, you challenge it. And I think it was Don, was that Don Stanley mm -hmm. repping that match? Yeah. yeah. He said, you can challenge the release, but it must be done verbally before the third shot. Right, which I didn't know that portion of the of the rules. So if, had I challenged, I think we would have had a, a shot at it, but I also didn't really know that we were, I don't know how exactly yeah, they I don't know if they would force that. Right. right, I don't know if they would have called that or not, to be honest. Yeah. Like, if they're so going by the written rule, like yeah. 100%. If they're going by the written rule, rule, yes. But, but now they're communicating with right. within the refs that you're Different. allowed for a natural upwards motion, which isn't in the written rule. So, yeah, I mean, it's just it's another it's a state of pure confusion and chaos, I would say. So, Deckel, what would you say? Would would you be a proponent of simply just going back to the old service rule? Yeah, I think. I mean, the stats that we have were from the old service rule. Don't see. Uh, that it was too much of a weapon there. Uh, and then you only have the, yes, you still have the, the belly button issue, uh, which you can't see, but maybe we give the refs a bit more, you know, freeway or, you know, just make them or tell them they can enforce it more or help them with some cameras or, you know, we usually have two refs like like when we play, right? Nobody so, knows what the second one does. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's one one ref that is only a kitchen ref uh, i think at that point and when you're serving nobody's at the kitchen there's no you know there's no foot faults or anything that ref should watch only the serve and maybe that's the only thing they watch is the contact point of uh of the serve so that that would help a lot i think if we add you know we have uh cameras on on the main two courts usually uh maybe we add a couple more cameras uh to help out i think that just that will help a ton Mm -hmm. Just the refs and and use of the cameras, and I like this is the first time we can challenge a serve uh, after the serve is hit. So in this case, you couldn't ch challenge at the end of the point, but at least if you miss the return, then you can. And maybe we add that you know 
also at the end of, of the point you can't because in, in MLP for example we could do that I remember you did that to me and you uh, can challenge no calls but I I also am not a huge fan of that like because like, what I did was like I mean I think it's kind of bogus right <laughs> if you can just if you can play the entire point out and then challenge it afterwards you basically have two opportunities to win the point yeah so right. if it's within the rules fuck yeah I'm gonna do that yeah but, but <laughs> you do have limited challenges based on your timeouts right yeah 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 okay um, but I think it is good to probably yeah, have it within maybe, the first three shots because you need a chance to like sort yeah, of register. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you know, maybe you, you you're only allowed to do it once per match, or I don't know, like some some rule that would that would limit it so people won't abuse it. And maybe it's something that you know we we change after after a few tournaments if people abuse or we see it doesn't work. But um, yeah, I I think the the old serving rules make a lot more sense than the than the new ones. And if you do want to make the serve less of a weapon, uh, I disagree, first of all. Uh, second of all, I think there are just m much better ways. Yeah, and for comparison, what is it, 40% in tennis? What was the number? 40% of serves are not returned, just for you know a um, comparison's sake. Right, so we're very, like, people, oh, we don't want to be like tennis with, you know, such short points. In tennis, it's almost 40%. In, in pickleball, it's almost... Uh, it's just it's above two. Barely over two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the comparison to tennis is just bad, right? Yeah. Like, you're serving underhand from from 40 feet away. We are not nearly to this. If we get to 40%, yeah, let's let's talk. If we get to 15% missed returns, yeah, let's let's talk. But we're not close to that. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been I've been a fan of, of weaponizing the serve in for forever, right? You're going to weaponize the serve whatever the rules are. Like, you're never just going to have people just getting the ball in no matter what you do with the with right. the rules but even yeah even now you see like the service the serve is still a weapon like, regardless how much you'll try to make it not a weapon it'll always be a weapon so i have a question for you do you think that it's possible we have this rule now at the beginning of 2024 as a result of the the ball change because i do think that as we're playing with this ball i don't think even when we're using the the new PPA dropping downwards from the hip, I would have to imagine we are probably not at 98% of returns, but I would guess we're probably missing 7.5% of, of returns with, this, with the new ball. Do you think this could have been just getting ahead of the fact that, like, hey, look, it's really hard to return with this new ball, we need to nerf the serve a little bit more. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's actually a great point, but I don't a lot think of a good conspiracy. Yeah, I don't think that's the that's the case. Uh, the rule was proposed. Well, but you're by... in the pocket of big pickles. <laughs> the rule the rule was proposed by uh, by the players committee, which they oh, okay yeah and damn that was I thought it was a good conspiracy theory. The, no, yeah, the, yeah, the players the players are the one the ones who, who pushed it. The players you know the people on the the players on the players committee. Who's on the players committee? Uh, I believe that uh, Colin, Matt, Lucy, Deacon, Brooke Buckner, uh, Catherine, and Elise. Somebody okay. told me that whatever it was, the seven worst servers in pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had, none of them are known for a big serve. So that makes sense. Um, Who's and, got the biggest serve of that group? Catherine? Probably. It's not Pat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Pat. It's not Colin. No, Pat, Pat's not on it. Oh, he's not? Uh, Matt. 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 Not Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, they're the, I mean, that committee is the one who proposed the, the rule change, and they, you know, in uh, the PPA agreed to, to test it out in these tournaments. Mm -hmm. So... And I think they they wanted to do that, you know, at the end of last year before you know before they even tried the Vulcan ball. So I don't think it has anything to do with the ball, but got it. Damn, <laughs> I, I thought like I was on. No, I mean, we'll clip that. Let's clip that part yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, but I I think it is unfair to just look at the the return success metric as like the one indicator that we focus on because mm -hmm. there's more to the impact of a serve than just whether they get it back over the net. It's True. what is it set up for the next sequence of play, right? It's yeah. like how good can the return be? 
Right, because even if the return is some big pop-up and then the next shot is a put-away, that's not reflected in this 97.8% number. Right? No, that's true. And sometimes does, it, it does happen that the you know the third shot, it's a it's an easy easy drive. Uh, there's still a chance for, for the player to return a fourth, even with a drive, because it's still a small court with two people. But yeah, there's definitely definitely quick points thanks to a serve, just drive, shake and bake, or maybe a, an aggressive drop that that you start you start ahead in the point, right? Um, but it also brings you a lot more. It brings you more to the kitchen because you get a more comfortable third shot. And if let's say if I'm played a few times in in rec that I'm not hitting my serve as hard, and the returner is just you know blasting the return, and I'm having a really tough time getting in the kitchen because mm -hmm. it's it's a really tough third shot so having a good serve gets you a shorter return which make which means you have a higher percent chance to get to the to the kitchen mm -hmm. so it, it brings us more to the kitchen it also kind of it also makes a faster paced game right again like we said one of the biggest things in in pickleball for spectators watching is that they're saying is um the game is too slow too many dinking rallies right how many times are we complaining oh like these you know two-minute dinking rallies or whatever that uh, that people don't like to watch. We might like to play them, but uh, the average spectator do doesn't like to watch them. So it does make a faster a faster game. Um, it just, uh, you know, more aggressive third shot, which creates maybe a fifth or a seventh shot attack. Just It just creates faster points and more entertaining, in my opinion. For the rec players out there, you, like, obviously these serve rules aren't going to be implemented in rec. People are still going to be serving big. If you're coming up against a big serve in you know the casual day-to-day -day play, how do you neutralize a big server? What should you be focusing on? Yeah. Um, so in general, if you are playing a, a big serve, uh, you should go far uh, as far as you can. Maybe not as far as you can, but a few feet off the off the baseline. Uh, get in a good athletic position. Low uh, will help you just to get your body weight behind behind the ball. Uh, so when you return, you can go forward and have more weight behind your shot. Yeah, you want to be, you want your momentum to carry you. Yeah, for the kitchen. Yeah, for sure. If you're standing close to the close to the baseline and you know straight up, you'll have a, a much harder time. I've got a YouTube video about this. It features Deckel very prominently. How oh, yeah? to return big serves, return pickleball <laughs> with like a uh, return pickleball serves like a pro using the three T's. You guys wow. know the three yeah, T's. Yeah, let's get to let's get what to target, uh -huh. technique, and timing or something like that i don't really remember it features me it does because oh. i was talking about how to neutralize oh, big cool. serves so i generally think back up like you said i think targets important because when i'm serving you to, or when i'm returning to mm -hmm. you i'm generally just trying to return right back to you right biggest margin for error if you're going right back to right. the to the server i mean don't give too many secrets about how to return against me like, no i don't they, know anymore they, new ball i have they, no idea <laughs> <laughs> new they, ball i'm missing so many returns zane does return my serve one of like maybe the best or one of the best from from people uh, I play against. Uh, it's funny, like if you do practice it and you do focus on the right things, uh, there's some people I get zero, you know, free returns or like free missed uh, returns from and some people that's a lot. So it just shows you you can adapt and, you know, return better and well if you do the right things. Generally, should you be returning if you're coming up against a big serve flat top spin? Should you be trying to slice it? Totally flat, no spin. If you try to brush up the ball when it's coming at you fast, it's going to be just more difficult to time. If you're slicing and chopping, your goose is cooked. <laughs> um, just what I think about is mirroring the flight path of the ball. If the ball is coming at you at this angle, at a certain angle, I'm going to swing back at the exact same trajectory okay. to try and have my paddle in line with the ball for as long as possible. Yeah, it makes it a little easier to time. Depth, probably the most important aspect. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. depth, for sure. Yeah, got it. There you go, rec players. Okay, should we talk a little bit more about uh, some of the results at the, the Desert Ridge? Um, did you guys watch the Martinez Vic and Stocks Road final? Yes. It was, was insane. That was crazy final, yeah. One of the best singles matches I've seen. It looks like singles is changing a little bit. Like, there's much more like hard cat and mouse, like cutting the ball back cross court. I mean, it it just hurts to watch it, the cutting mm -hmm. back and forth, the way these guys yeah. can move. 
yeah, I think I mean I think players in general are just putting more work and just just getting more athletic. I don't you know just putting more work. I think now in the off season was uh, was a good time for people just to uh, to work hard and we see that with so many like. I guess so many new highlights, like crazy gets and like, yeah. you know, James's crazy shot and mm -hmm. and all those, you know, crazy highlight singles points. Uh, and those those two players are just two of the most athletic players on tour and they're playing each other. So it's hard, hard to put the ball away because they just get to everything, which just makes super entertaining points. Yeah. You two both used to be big singles players. <laughs> Not so much these and days. Because we watched these matches and we're like, <laughs> yeah. why, why would we do that? <laughs> he must have tuned into last week's podcast or saw the clips. I'm like, bro, no. Jaume? <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I, I'll, I'll pass on that. I'll take yeah. him four points in singles, put in the bank, but... <laughs> <laughs> But no, no, I'm not trying to do that for a good two hours. Yeah, for like to do that, you obviously have to train hard uh, as well. Um, I don't want to speak for Zane, but like definitely, definitely focusing on doubles, uh, better, better for the body, and you know to try to play as many as many years as possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I so I used to I did used to play a lot of singles. I think uh, last time was over two years ago um i had some some knee issues and as soon as i stopped they went away um, and i did come back and and play some more but just decided uh, i want to you know some some days are super long and uh having singles the first day is you know not ideal uh for if you if you have long days of, of doubles after and you definitely have to practice uh, a lot of singles as well yeah. so just rather focus on doubles I feel like it used to be if uh, like a high level tennis player came into pickleball, they could pretty quickly become very good at singles. But the way the game is changing, becoming much more cat and mouse, uh, I I just feel like that's not the case anymore. There's a much higher barrier to entry, kind of like doubles. I wouldn't say it's necessarily becoming more cat and mouse. I think that those two players are both very good at drawing their opponent into having to play cat and mouse, mm -hmm. and they're both good at playing cat and mouse but you're also seeing the players like kwang dong yeah. who is not doing any cat and mouse mm -hmm. right like he's blasting pretty much every every shot so i don't know if it's i think that the quality of the cat and mouse is certainly like at an all-time high yeah but i don't think you know you're seeing federico choose to hit a forehand third shot drop and come into it come in after no. it on singles right. right and you're seeing you're seeing ben trying to be more aggressive with his thirds mm -hmm. let you know, he used to almost only drop and and get in to to play the cat and mouse as much as possible uh now he's driving more as well uh yeah i mean i think also with the paddle technology uh, and just paddles are more powerful more spinny it's easier to pass but also players are faster so they're maybe not easier to pass and then we get you know these crazy points between uh fed and jami What'd you think of the crowds at Desert Ridge? I heard it was difficult to even get a seat on championship court at some points, but like in that singles final, there was like a hundred people. It was almost like there was nobody there. Um, but generally, like, what's your take on the the crowds and how that's changing? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, it, the stadium was mostly full, like all all the time, um, and there was yeah people people trying to watch from you know from the corners and stuff. Uh, could definitely have, have filled more. Um, grandstand was was always uh full as well and i think the the side courts too uh people in arizona love pickleball in general yeah uh, and the crowds the crowds are growing all the time um so yeah it was i i really liked actually that that stadium just because it's um in terms of how close the crowd is to you so it it's a good and a bad thing because sometimes they walk on the court which is not you know not the best thing but uh you know in changeovers of course not during points but um, but it's fun when the crowd is, is that close to you. It's just like the atmosphere is better. I remember, uh, I like, I really like the, the Red Rock one in, um, in Utah, yeah. uh, just because it's, uh, the fans are like right on top of you, like mm -hmm. they're on the court and it's not a big stadium at all, but just, but still the atmosphere is really nice. Yeah. Uh, rather than, uh, for example, like the Vegas one, which like the, the players were, uh, too the fans, out. yeah, too, too far away. So there's, I think a happy medium is good, but uh, and personally, I do like when the fans are, are close, just fun atmosphere. Yeah. Do you guys, so I, Zane, I asked you this maybe like a year ago, do you get recognized just sort of in your every, like your day-to-day -day life? Do you ever get recognized when you're just walking around the streets of, of Austin or in other cities? 
Uh, not usually. Happen happened a couple times, but not not a lot outside of pickleball. Has it changed for you, Zane? I get recognized as much from the podcast or YouTube or or playing. I'd say it happens randomly, like once a week, maybe. Yeah. So, got it. But I've got a couple of different. I touch a couple different, I guess, audiences right. that way, right? So, I don't know. I also yeah. go out and about a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a homebody, so. Uh, it was cool to see uh, Jimmy, Big Papa Jimmy, get number one spot on Sports Center. That was, that was pretty awesome. wild. That shot was crazy. Yeah. It's just good for pickleball to get that that for sure. I'm sick right? of the easy ATPs <laughs> being on Sports Center. That one was like, not easy. No, 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 I agree. Like I agree. This is this is the first one that's like super legit, really, really right. high level difficulty shot. Like Jay's been on Sports Center three <laughs> times for me. Probably more. But exactly because he's French and he makes it look harder than it is and he runs all the way across the court to get an ATP that anybody would have made and like oh look that guy ran a long way he has a great come on too after this is true alright fair maybe that's come part on. of it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jimmy deserved the number one spot for that yeah. and so it is good to see a really really high level of difficulty shot getting on to Sports Center. they sort of do that with tennis a little bit too like they don't Pick the highest difficulty shots for a Sports Center top ten. Like if somebody hits a tweener winner, it's always right. on there, and that's, that's not always yeah. the the craziest type of shot. Yeah. Like, do you remember yeah. JJ Wolf sliding lefty down the line forehand winner? I don't. Basically, he he was he was running full sprint at the end of a crazy point. Can't get a two handed backhand. Takes his his right hand off and just slaps a lefty winner down the line. And I don't think he made it on sports center top 10, oh, really? but it was like the, the craziest shot yet. Like yeah. a random tweener winner will always be on. Always. There, top there's 10. just certain shots that people just, just love. So tweeners and in, in tennis, AT, I guess, ATPs and pickleball, mm -hmm. uh, Ernie's and pickleball too. It's like, Oh, look at that Ernie. Uh, but you know, I don't think it's that, uh, crazy. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, um, and it's it's quite common in, in pickleball the Ernie's and the uh, and the ATPs. So it's good for pickleball to get deserved hype on Sports yes, Center. Hundred percent. On the flip side, we had the uh, pickleball slam, uh, <laughs> which did okay on on viewership, but uh, as expected, took some heat on on Twitter and social media. Liquidity on Twitter tweeted a, a video of Agassi McEnroe. Um, Sharapova and who was the other one? Uh, Steffi. Steffi Graf. Uh, and it, he just said, pickleball is it an embarrassment uh, of a sport. <laughs> All right. I'm desensitized <laughs> to that at this point. Yeah. So that did yeah. 596,000 on ESPN. So last year's did a little bit better. Um, and like for comparison, so like PGA was also this weekend. Average 1.95 million viewers. NHL All Star Game, average 1.4 million. Uh, it beat out Live Golf on Saturday and on Sunday, but Live was competing with uh, the PGA, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then all of the like college matchups, basketball did way better. Um, Pro Bowl did 1.826 million, um, but yeah, last year. I thought they had like 1.1 million last year or something pretty good. And it was between 600 and 700,000. Um, going back to Desert Ridge, any other takeaways from some of those results? I think that the I, I well, I think that the ball is neutralizing things. Like the 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 matches are all a lot closer for the most part, right? Like like Dave Fleming kept saying, it was the the escape room. Ben and Annalie Waters yeah. were were barely winning their matches. Mm -hmm. Colin and Ben faced a match point against Christian and Did they have match point. I don't. I think they. I thought they had one. I thought they got up to to ten. Okay, I'm maybe not sure. I, I could be wrong. Annalie and close, Catherine yeah. were down three nine. Oh yeah, in game Wasn't three. It, yeah, eight one, one eight three yeah. nine. Crazy like, comeback. Yeah, I mean, I think that a the playing field is leveling itself out. Yeah more to begin with and then b i think i do think that the ball creates a little bit more variability and and is like is making 
the playing field a little bit more level as well. Um, you know, you can get a team like me and Eric get hot and take out a, a, a two seed, right? Like, and a lot of that came from hitting a few really big serves and crashing behind a few good drives. And yeah, I, I think that the, the, you're seeing players like get hot and get streaky a little bit more, which can level the playing field a bit. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Five out of six uh, medals in, in men's doubles or yolas, just saying. <laughs> and one pro XR, baby. Let's go. Let's go. We're how, how, how has that impacted switching from engage to yola? You feel like your game's improved? Uh, I definitely, I, I like the paddle a lot. Uh, the, the new alpha paddle. paddle. Uh, definitely a lot of pop, a lot of spin. Um, I think that for me, the biggest part is the... Um, just a bit more consistent for me at least that's what that's how it feels um that's the biggest advantage i i feel yeah yeah got it um it's right. pretty similar in terms of i think what the pop was the, the engage is okay. also you know yeah well that was that also very poppy yeah 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 for I remember sure. when it came out it was like everyone was talking it's a cannon yeah no definitely a lot of pop uh do some voicemails let's get it hey boys this is uh mario from south carolina just checking in with uh with Deco. I just wanted to ask him um, how does he feel about being the new bull of pickleball? And my second question is, why would I pay um hundred and eight dollars a year for his videos that he does with Ben and Colin for Pickleball three sixty when I can just watch Zane and um what's his name the other dude there? Um McGuffin's videos for free and all the others that are free what's special about pickleball 360. Manute I'm bull is a giant lanky tall slender basketball player <laughs> okay um i guess it's it's good to be big mostly in, in pickleball unless you get hit all the time uh you know definitely definitely advantages and disadvantages um I'll, I'll go to the second question yeah um so why would you why would you subscribe to you got zane's yeah. youtube why would you subscribe to pickleball 360 um yeah there's definitely there's definitely a lot of great content there for free obviously zane has a lot of good stuff tyson many many other people um uh our videos we think are quality we get great great reviews for them from them uh you also have myself plus you know Ben and Colin there. Uh, I don't know. Zane hasn't figured out how to beat Ben and Colin yet. Have you? I don't think I've ever beaten Ben and Colin. <laughs> well, I haven't really either. Maybe I should watch uh, more more of the videos as well. Uh, but yeah, I, for uh, 180 bucks is basically around the same as you pay, you're paying for one lesson with you know an average pro. Here you're learning from you know the best team in the world. Plus me, so call me whatever you want. Um, so yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely worth it. So are your uh, question is pickleball three sixty organized into sort of like courses or is it just sort of like uh, sort of videos? So we have over two hundred videos uh, from like all different levels, like different levels of you know beginners, me, inter uh, intermediate and advanced, uh, some pro shots as well. Um, so you can you can kind of you know select what you want or you know dinks or whatever whatever type, like area in the court as well so it's you know it's easy for you to uh to select what you want to work on or what level you want to work on and uh yeah who you want to learn from mm -hmm. i do think it's it's an interesting question right like why do you mm -hmm. go purchase something when you do have an alternative yeah. for free well why do you go to college and and get a degree right so a you obviously have the piece of paper afterwards you get a degree but if your objective was simply to learn, people are still going to university just to learn. And I think having experts to curate the content and and separate out the the crap from what's good is very, very important, right? I could learn anything about anything without going to college just by using this computer, right? But it would be very, very difficult for me to sort through what's just noise and what's actually good stuff so having people to to organize some of that into like an actual sort of course is what's what makes it worth it yeah a lot of the yeah. same stuff is uh, is on youtube but you don't know what's good and what's not yeah for sure lots of lots of stuff out there a lot of great stuff a lot of not so great stuff hmm. 
All right, we'll send you an invoice for that. Uh, okay, yeah, thanks, good, thanks, Zane. That was great. But, uh, no problem. But also subscribe to mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. <laughs> All right, we got we got um, Keith from South New Jersey. Want uh, he is looking for advice for short players. Uh, Zane, I just want to say thank you to, to Mario, the last guy, for calling Tyson the other guy. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey guys, this is Keith from Southern New Jersey. Um, yeah, I love the show. It's actually my favorite podcast. Um, and, you know, the only podcast I've ever listened to. And I, I mean, I'm kind of afraid to listen to other podcasts, to be honest, because yeah, I don't want that opinion to change. I'm just having so much fun. Anyway, here's my question. Um, I'm like the tallest uh, five foot seven you've ever seen. Uh, I'm doing my best out here. But uh, it's a question for, for Zane. As like, you know, a shorter guy, uh, your Wikipedia says you're 5'9", so you're not quite as short as me, although I would probably put 5'9 if I made a Wikipedia page. But, um, you know, any tips for the shorter folks out there? I'm mainly just watching the women play. I feel like I can glean more insight from them on court coverage and shot selection and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, any insight would be helpful. Thanks. Advice for short players? Yeah, Maybe. well, Keith sounds like a short king, and yeah. <laughs> short kings are kings too. Well, let's just say that. So we have, we have our our own particular set of skills. Uh, we're we're closer to the ground, lower center of gravity. Generally, we we move a little bit better, and we get out of the way a little bit better, right? So, short king Keith, uh, pop off king, and. Peg those people with some some body shots if we've learned anything from today's <laughs> pod. Um, yeah, faster footwork. Uh, the, I guess you know another thing. Actual piece of advice mm -hmm. is you can sort of squat down a little bit lower and get into that scorpion position a little bit easier. But I'd say um, that's probably a five O plus sort of tactic. Right. Speaking of squatting. <clears throat> Chris Kelly from the Sorry Not Sorry Pickleball Podcast. Yeah, I just want to know, Decklebar, your one of your best shots is the squatting scorpion. Uh, and as a professional squatter, I'm wondering if you've ever considered getting a sponsorship from Squatty Potty. I think you'd represent their brand very well. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks. Well, it's not a bad idea. I'm not sure what Squatty Potty is, uh, but... Sure. You put it under your feet at the base of the toilet, so uh -huh. you like get up and you're uh -huh. like on the toilet like this, supposed to uh, okay. help for a better release. Okay, cool. I I mean, I'll try it out, <laughs> and then we can talk. Yeah, send him some product. Yeah, he's got to evaluate. Yeah, you got, you got it. right. You got to test the product first. You can't just you know just promote it out there. All right, we got one more. I think this is going to be a familiar voice. Hey, this is Maddie Pipple calling from Austin. Uh, so Zane and Deckel just played a pretty epic semifinal match. Uh, it looked more like dodgeball than pickleball for good portions of it. When people talk about either adding a, a shot clock or speeding up paddles so much to a point where it, it changes the game to make it more uh, enjoyable to the viewer, do you think that game y'all played is kind of a good representation of like how that would look? I gotta say it was pretty entertaining to watch, but it would be pretty scary to be a part of, especially for the three out of four of y'all that weren't wearing glasses. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it was a it was a little bit scary at times. Um, I think, yeah, definitely the the paddles getting more powerful is making things uh, shorter. Uh, but you know, it was the only match that was really like that, right? I think I think people are taking that a little bit, you know, to the extreme. Or now it's only going for body bags or whatever. Uh, but it's it's the only match that you saw like that. It's not if every match becomes that, then then we need we have a problem. Uh, if it's one match, then it's just something to look out for, you know. Then if it if it keeps happening more and more, then I think we should definitely pay more attention to it. There's a new meta. It's pegging people. Uh, I don't know what Deckel's talking about. I take back everything I said about Pickleball 360 if he's going to use this antiquated advice. He's not up to date with the most recent invasions of the game. Um, yeah, that's what Pickleball is now. Get used to it. I like it. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are we practicing later, right? No. Uh, tom tomorrow um, morning. Tomorrow morning. I, uh, I have COVID. <laughs> I can't. Um, all right. Tune in on February 9th on the Dink YouTube. We've got the Pickle Bowl Celebrity Pro-Am out in Las Vegas. 
We have Logan Lyle, Golden Tape, Marcellus Wiley, Jenna Bandy, Kelly Dodd, Are You Kidding TV. We got the Pointer Bros who do those funny pickleball clips. Cliff Avril and a million others hosted by Matt Manassi and Cameron Blackwood. Uh, so you can catch it on our YouTube channel or on Brinks TV. And then there will be replays later on uh, Pickle TV. Um, and if you're in the Vegas area, come out to the amateur tournament on, uh, on Saturday. Um, registration is open. But that's all we got for, for this week, boys. Deckel, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. That's Pickle Pod. That was fun. Pickle Pod. Appreciate it, Deckel. Thanks, guys. All right. And as you guys know, we're always wearing Viore. We've got Viore shirt, Viore shirt, uh, pants here. And uh, Zane was wearing his Viore. Um, but you can go to viore.com slash the dink and uh, you get 20% off your first purchase and enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. That's V-U-O-R-I.com slash the dink and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. Again, we wear this constantly. We are already wearing it. We're happy to have them as a sponsor because it just makes sense because we already love the product. If you haven't tried playing in it, definitely recommend it. I am a big fan of wearing it anytime I'm on the move. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, dollar has gone on Yagi.